Okay, uh, my clock has ticked over to 16.05, so I'll just uh, get going. So um, this final part is uh, talking about some of the ways that um, C++ enables you to write your code in such a way that you can get uh, portable performance uh, by which, well, I'll define this uh, shortly, uh, across multiple architectures, so across things like accelerators as well as the CPU and uh, perhaps one day on things like FPGAs. But really, uh, it's about trying to get, get good enough uh, results uh, across many different heterogeneous things without having to re rewrite your code entirely. So our, um, our modern uh, high-performance computer usually has a couple of levels of parallelism. So we've got many nodes, uh, each with uh, one or more multi-core CPU and each core on the CPU having uh, one or one or two uh, vector floating point units, uh, you know, which could be up to five, 12 bits wide, say. And a lot of them, uh, including the, um, the new top one on the top 500, uh, the Summit machine in the States uh, has, I think, six, uh, Volta accelerators per node, along with the one or two, I can't recall, uh, multi-core power CPUs. So these accelerators, you know, overwhelmingly are GPUs. Um, you know, they have a very high number of uh, flops uh, per watt of power they use. They've got typically very high bandwidth graphics memory on board um, that you've got to deal with the complexity of managing the offload of your kernels to these things and the distinct memory spaces. So our, our challenge as a program is to expose your algorithms uh, parallelism in a way that um, you can map onto the hardware with uh, you know optimal performance, uh, an intuitive expression of your algorithm, uh, portability across many different systems. You know, pure GPU, pure CPU, a GPU. Uh, or a Xeon Phi now discontinued, or whatever the hardware manufacturers come up with in the future, and you know you only, you want to do this with one version of the code, or at least as you know as close as you can get to these uh, things. So you need to control several things. So I like to split this up into two two categories, and uh, then two aspects of each one. So you've got your your data and your execution. So for the data, you've got to think about where is the data in, in in which memory space is this on the the host's dram or the graphic cards um high bandwidth memory and for the data you also have to think about how is the data laid out is this a an array of structures or a structure of an array or is there something more complex for multi-dimensional arrays are they tiled or something and then you've got the execution. So where is the computation to take place? And how do the different parts of it relate to each other? So is it a, a for each, a reduction, and so on, or more, something more complex? So um, if you're going to do GPU programming, accelerated programming, you, you might wonder why, why, why you don't just use one of these things. So you could just use CUDA. Um, since NVIDIA is the, the biggest player in the uh, accelerated computing uh, market. Uh, but again, you're uh, stuck with NVIDIA. Oh, sorry, NVIDIA, I've spotted a typo. Uh, you know, you're tying yourself to their ship, and um, that makes a lot of people, myself included, slightly nervous that you're uh, tying yourself to only one technology. Um, so the response to that is uh, OpenCL. Um, you know, you can run this on NVIDIA chips and AMD chips, embedded GPUs. It works on the CPU, although the performance is a bit uh, ropey. Um, the biggest downside with that, from my point of view, is it's really rather low level, the code that you have to write. Um, I don't know if anyone's done an OpenCL uh, introduction tutorial, which is all I've done for OpenCL, but I found it quite hard work. Uh, you can use OpenMP4 uh, or greater or OpenACC um, because these both support offload of kernels to accelerators in a 
a way that a lot of HPC programmers are quite comfortable with using the pragmas in the compilers. And um, you know, maybe eventually this is going to be um, a workable solution. Uh, but at the moment, it seems that it isn't quite flexible enough yet um, to be able to port uh, port once and um, have it run across multiple uh, architectures. You do need to do quite a lot of in-depth tuning to make this work uh, across different um, things. And you also need completely different directives to work on the CPU versus the GPU. So you know, if anyone's got any other suggestions, I'm happy to try and uh, uh, talk about those as well. So feel free to shout out as we go along. Uh, the other thing people talk about is um, parallel languages. So uh, you know, this is definitely uh, an active area of computer science, computational science research. Um, very many parallel languages have been proposed, um, but very few are used outside of sort of computer science uh, research labs. So one of the key problems is that you need to trust that this parallel language has been tested well enough for your purposes, and that it is going to be supported by someone uh, for at least the lifetime of your application. Otherwise, you're going to have to take on that burden. You know, you also need your compiler. You need debugger libraries that are going to work with it. Uh, you know, profiling tools and so on. You also have to learn a new language. Um, and anyone who is going to maintain or extend your code also needs to learn that new language. And porting it to a new architecture um, may also uh, require convincing the compiler team to port it for you or doing this yourself. Um, you know, for example, if you want to use one of the new ARM systems that are starting to come online, um, this may not be supported transparently. So. Uh, C++ can help you, and unfortunately, my image seems to have broken there. Um, the practical that I'm sure that all of you have done, <laughs> if anyone's actually done that, I'd be interested to know if you could just uh, let me know. Um, there was a lab that uh, goes with these that um, had an example of implementing a matrix uh, container class that uh, did a Morton order data layout, which I will try and um, display for you. I don't know why that hasn't displayed. There we go. Uh, OK, clearly, uh, when I tested this on Safari, it worked nicely. But now I'm showing you this with Collaborate in Chrome. It's not working properly. Um, but this uh, is a data layout that's a sort of uh, has nice cache cache-friendly properties because it's a cache oblivious algorithm. There's always going to be a scale that's going to fit in whatever cache uh, you've got. So instead of laying out uh, elements in memory in long columns uh, consecutively, uh, as I'm sort of drawing the pointer, you do this Z order layout. And uh, you can have quite good locality properties if you're doing, say, a stencil type code. So um, we've also seen in the last uh, little lecture how the um, standard template, li template library makes um, many algorithms available to in a standardized way. So uh, we've got the standard for each, uh, which accepts a, begin a beginning and an end uh, iterator pair. And you pass in your function-like thing, and it will do something to each element of the uh, um, the data that you pass in. And um, you can implement these functions in standard C++. So you could uh, you could write your own version of standard for each. Um, for example, if um, your input iterator is a random access iterator, so for example, it's from a standard vector or it's just a bare pointer, then you could use uh, this approach to write your own iterator, which is parallelized with OpenMP. Um, has to be three or version three or greater for the C++ support. And 
you could implement this as taking an, an input iterator pair as well as your unary function, almost the same. And all we've got differently is that we um, put the pragma omp parallel four around this. We iterate from the first, as long as that's less than the last, we increment, and we call this function on the iterator. Um, so you could use this as a drop-in replacement for the standard for each um, function call. Um, so on for each begin end element on each element do something. Okay, so this is this is kind of nice, but it's just one one thing for one method of uh, parallelization. We want to get. Uh, more across uh, the many levels, uh, at least across one node, and uh, you know. So there are a bunch of options that um, various groups have developed and done some of this work for us. I'm going to talk about a handful of these, um, and there are also a whole bunch uh, that target a subset of platforms. For example, Thrust, which is a CUDA-specific container and algorithms uh, library. It interoperates very nicely with CUDA. Um, Hemi is similar, um, but it hides a lot of the complexity of writing your device code, and it interoperates nicely with modern C++. Microsoft C++ AMP, which is a little language, a small language extension that lets you hide many of the details of writing code, uh, whether it's going to execute on host or GPU. And there are lots of lots of these that have been uh, developed. So there's this target DP where DP means data parallel. It was uh, uh, developed here at EPCC by um, Alan Gray, who's now working for NVIDIA. It uses um, fairly vanilla C rather than C++ as the host language, and it targets parallelism using OpenMP and CUDA. You have to access your data elements through macros, which uh, hide the data layout and uh, the data allocation and movement, uh, which is all done for you through a relatively uh, straightforward and nice API. Let's just spot another typo. Um, you have to um, access the parallelism through a couple of uh, macros, uh, the target TLP for thread level parallelism and ILP for instruction level parallelism. Um, and it's pretty good if you want something lightweight and uh, you need to interoperate with an existing C code base. And there's a couple of um, publications and a link to the source code there. So there's a, um, a, a piece of software called Raja that comes from Lawrence Livermore National Lab, um, one of the big uh, US. Um, Labs. It's a C++ library that uses um, many of the concepts I've been talking about um, to try and achieve performance portability. So here's um, uh, sort of everyone in HPC's favorite little benchmark, AX plus Y. Um, uh, here it's combined with a reduction and it's a, a double precision version. So we've got pointers to double X and Y. We um, create a, a sum reduction uh, variable. Uh, we start from zero. We say it's a, we give it some reduce policy, which is defined elsewhere, um, and say we're working on doubles. Then we do a, a Raja for all uh, function call, and this is parameterized by some execution policy, which tells uh, this system how to run it, whether it's on the CPU or the GPU. But apart from that, it's exactly the same. We have begin and end um, uh, range specifications, and we pass in um, a lambda that accepts the current the index that this one uh, occurrence of the loop body is going to work on. And the runtime deals with scheduling this across your available hardware and calling it with the appropriate um, I. And then you provide the the what is to be done, and the runtime deals with how it is executed across your data range. So 
So here I'm processing some of the, the data that the authors have uh, produced about uh, the performance of this. So this uh, CoMD is a uh, is a classical molecular dynamics code it's, uh, written in C. Um, and in the, the figure, the green, which I hope uh, comes across clearly on the, the, the webinar thing, um, is in green and is their sort of baseline performance. So the, the Raja authors um, ported it uh, naively. Uh, but this is what a developer calls a naive uh, port, so I can't comment as to how true, truly naive that is. And then they did some actual optimization on this, uh, which they're showing in yellow. So um, the nice thing, I suppose, is that the scaling is tracking fairly well the, um, the baseline implementation. And with a bit of optimization, they are doing better than the optimized C version. So uh, this is, isn't uh, this isn't as some simple kernel that has been done as naively as possible on the CPU. And they claim that they've altered only around two percent of the lines, and it also now will run on a GPU as well as on um, a CPU. So Cocos is a, another library that comes from a, another large uh, US national lab. It's uh, the Sandia lab this time. Um, it's got a relatively similar feature set to Raja, but they're a lot more open in their sort of d development model. And they've got a couple of major applications uh, which are using this, um, most notably the LAMPS, the Molecular Dynamics Code, and the Sparta Rarified Gas Code. And um, various libraries such as Trillanos are also using Cocos uh, behind the scenes. And the labs are, the lab has committed itself to supporting the use of Cocos both internally for their uh, applications um, and externally for you know, other scientific users. And there's a, a library of routines for using BLAST, LAPAC, and uh, messing around with graphs. And there's a slowly growing ecosystem of codes that are using this. Um, so here's a, another uh, a simple example, uh, um, the same example we talked about before, except single precision this time. It's AX plus single precision AX plus Y. So what we have here is this Cocos parallel four. We say what the range of n is, and uh, we declare the lambda using a macro Cocos lambda, which is mainly exists in order to deal with some requirements from CUDA that require that the lambdas have a device attribute added to them. So what this will do is it will run the lambda n times in the so-called default execution space that you've set when you compile the program. And by default, this will be the CPU, but it could easily be the GPU. And we're saying inside here that yi is equal to, well, AX uh, plus Y, as the, um, the benchmark uh, suggests. So another way you might do this is by doing dot product, or another thing you might want to do is a dot product. So if we have got want to do X dot Y, where they're both vectors with some large size, we say that our result's going to be uh, a float. We call parallel reduce. Uh, Again, with our lambda, we've got the index and a reference to the value after this one has been done. And we say that it gets incremented by a times y at that index value. And then we pass in our reduction variable at the end. And what happens behind the scenes here is that Cocos manages uh, uh, each thread's local temporary value, and then it deals with some sort of reduction in a scalable way based on the execution space, whether that's CPU or GPU. So um, what I've not talked about is the data, the um, X's and Y's here uh, that's being talked about. So you might notice that it's being uh, accessed uh, using round parentheses rather than square brackets as you would expect from C and C++. So this is because this is, uh, they've chosen to overload the function call operator instead of the element access operator, because this allows you to uh, 
look much more like a multi-dimensional array. Uh, the um, element access operator has to be only one dimensional. So you can only accept one uh, integer as your index there by a, because, well, that's what the C++ language has decreed. Cocos uses this sort of a uh, lightweight uh, um, template class that they call a view that stores data. And it's, uh, you can think of it a bit like a standard shared pointer, um, except uh, in a multi-dimensional uh, um, context. So you have to fix your rank, the number of dimensions um, at compile time, but you can set the size of the array at either compile or runtime or a mixture of the two. So for example, this uh, data one here is uh, set both at uh, runtime, just passing it as a bare pointer, sorry, setting the type as a bare pointer, uh, the template parameter type as a bare pointer, I'm failing to speak, sorry. And you pass in the, the sizes when you construct one of these views. You can mix this, you could have one runtime, one compile time here, so it's one run here one compile there, or um, both at compile time. Sorry for the typo, that should be a two. Um, here, so you can uh, uh, define, declare and define one of these uh, things here. So of course also um, takes the view, the allocation of data of memory and copying of uh, one of these arrays because they could potentially be rather large things that should only occur when you explicitly request it. So copy construction and copy assignment are shallow copy operations. So they may, which is why I say these are quite like a standard shared pointer. So it's only the last view uh, only when the last view holding a reference to the data will the data actually be freed. So I'm going to ask a question in a second. Um, in this case here, this snippet of code, um, what's going to be printed when I print a uh, element zero? So if I create a view with um, five integer elements, uh, A, which is just given uh, I'm just labeling them with uh, the names A, B, and C. So if I set B to A, and then inside this block here, I create a new one. I set A to be one, A zero to be one, B zero to be two, C zero to be three in that order. Then I exit that scope block, and so of course the destruct this uh, deletes the local variable C, and then I print the uh, value of a zero. So, um, can anyone take a guess as to what will actually be printed? Okay, someone's guessing one. Oh, it's changed his mind. Three. Uh, okay. Okay. So these are um, shallow copies. So they, the variable uh, A and B, is they are holding a reference to the same underlying data storage, the same five elements five uh, integers piece of memory. Um, so we're setting the zero element in, we're only dealing with the zero um, integer in this data for all of these. Um, so we're setting it to first one, then two, and then three. So indeed, yes, it will be three. Uh, you're right, Dennis. So um, memory spaces, so talking about the data and the where of it. Uh, Cocos has, has this concept of a memory space. So for example, you've got the, the main uh, host DRAM, the GPU's um, standard memory. Um, if you were, we're using a Xeon Phi, you've got the two different uh, um, bits. You've got the on-chip high bandwidth memory as well as the um, off-chip DRAM. Um, and if you're using CUDA, you could be using CUDA unified memory where you let the runtime deal with the migration for you. So um, what you do is you give uh, the um, a memory spa space class as the second argument of the view. So these are 
classes defined by the COCOS system. Um, and you pass one of these in as the second template argument to the view when you create it. So if you want a two dimensional uh, runtime sized uh, view that's going to live on the GPU memory, you would uh, declare it like this. And then when you construct it with the size M and M, um, it will be actually allocated. So if you don't provide one of these memory spaces, um, the COCOS system will use um, a default that is um, the natural one for your default execution space, which is something that is defined at uh, compile time. And by default will be the, just the host. You can also tell COCOS to control how memory is laid out um, at compile time. Um, and this is just done with yet another template parameter, which is again a uh, uh, and just another class that uh, tells uh, COCOS how to do this. So it um, uses the concept of layout right and layout left, which is basically whether it's the leftmost or the rightmost index, which is varying uh, fastest. So for example, you can do it in the C, the standard C style uh, with layout right, and uh, the Fortran style layout left. Um, and again, if you don't provide one, it will use the default for the memory space that's in use for that array. So layout left for um, GPU arrays and layout right for CPU arrays. And you can also define your own layouts, which are perhaps blocked or Morton ordered, as we've been talking about. Um, so the, the sort of final data um, uh, relating concept COCOS has is um, a mirror. So a mirror is a view of uh, a compatible array in terms of its shape, uh, its rank and shape um, that resides in um, a possibly different memory space. So if you want to copy between these things, you have to explicitly request it with uh, the COCOS colon colon deep copy uh, function. And um, you can also conveniently create these mirrors uh, uh, which uh, using the uh, COCOS create mirror view um, function call on some data. So this will create a mirror um, on the host for the CUDA uh, data here. You can populate this on and then trigger a copy uh, to data from host data. So it's uh, the same as with the standard C library uh, mem copy function. The destination goes on the left much like in an assignment call. And then you can use this on the device with a COCOS parallel for um, function call. So uh, yeah, so a few results from uh, the, uh, this is from the um, uh, Ramsey's GPU astrophysical code. So this was, uh, uh, a figure taken from some of the COCOS papers. Um, this uh, code uh, does um, magneto hydrodynamics uh, in astrophysical situations, and it uh, was started in 2009. Uh, they paralyzed it using CUDA and MPI. And the developers of Ramses uh, have ported some parts to use COCOS instead of CUDA. And they claim that they didn't do much optimization, uh, but for this port, they see performance that's about two to 5% worse than um, their implementation that they have spent um, uh, about uh, eight or nine years at the point that this paper was written um, uh, tuning. So the COCOS can achieve within a few percent of this highly tuned um, custom CUDA imp implementation um, out of the box. Um, so the 
other nice thing is that they get significantly better CPU only performance because uh, this was not a thing that they were trying to achieve uh, good performance for when they were developing. But because Cocos is trying to be in enhanced portability, they get much, much better uh, performance. The gray was their original code. And so they are doing um, a good 50% better uh, using uh, Cocos. There are also some uh, results from the LAMPS code, which is a, quite an important open source molecular dynamics code, um, sorry, classical molecular dynamics code. A lot of people use it, and it was the first major public code that was uh, using Cocos. So I took these uh, benchmarks from the uh, LAMPS um, website um, uh, in um, September or October, I think, uh, last year. So in both of the figures, um, higher is better. And um, along the x-axis is sort of running a running this Leonard Jones uh, simple potential case uh, got just one one CPU 16 core Sandy Bridge uh, thing using two uh, K80s with Cocos uh, two K80s without Cocos just using the uh, lamps native um, the lamps enhancement to use uh, uh, GPUs but the issue with that is that they have not ported all of the code to use the GPU. So um, they're doing an awful lot better because they can, uh, the developer effort to port more of it using Cocos is significantly better. One uh, KNL, uh, one Xeon Phi, uh, they're doing a factor of three better than one Sandy Bridge. Well, that's not great, but it's better than nothing. Uh, but they are doing better with the KNL than their OpenMP implementation. But if you use uh, the implementation that's highly tuned from Intel themselves, then you can do, do, a, do about 25% a better than Cocos. Um, so there's still some space for doing some uh, a highly tuned vendor implementation. And similarly with this other potential, this Stillinger Weber potential, again, higher is better. You can see that uh, a highly tuned vendor implementation can win by a lot. They are getting uh, about 68 uh, performance units. This is million atom steps per second, which is a sort of relevant uh, measure for doing molecular dynamics, I suppose. They're doing uh, a lot better with that than Cocos is doing on two um, NVIDIA K80s. Um, so, uh, you know, this is far from perfect, and um, there's still scope for a highly tuned platform specific implementation to win big in certain circumstances that uh, just hit the corner cases for um, these libraries. So, you know, these things are definitely works in progress, but I think this is a very useful way of taking advantage of um, C to get your um, get your heterogeneous parallelism for um, a relatively low cost and then you know trying to optimize in a platform specific way when when you hit up against a, a bottleneck so um, yeah I'm very happy to take uh, any questions uh, now about this particular set of slides or about anything I've talked about, or indeed anything at all relating to C++ for uh, this, and any general feedback or comments about the course, I'm really happy to hear this to try and improve and um, uh, update the material online on GitHub. So all these slides and the exercises are on GitHub. I do have a set of exercises that relate to using the um, GPU stuff, but this was uh, done in a slightly odd way because we don't have much availability of GPU machines here when we delivered this as part of our MSC. So it's a bit odd. I haven't had a chance to pull that out into a more reusable uh, format yet. But I hope to do so uh, this week. Um, and I will update it on GitHub when I can. 
but yeah, thank you for your attention and please ask me questions. Uh, Dennis asks if I'm working on or using any of those frameworks. Um, not in my current active projects, but I have used CoCOS in the past, uh, which is perhaps why CoCOS has come out best here, because um, I've done a sort of, some sort of proof of concept implementations using CoCOS of the Last Sportsman code, um, which is a particular method for doing fluid dynamics that I've used in the past. Um, I found it um, pretty straightforward to get going, um, but I've not been developing these frameworks from the sort of framework side. I'm just uh, a user for these. But I do like Coikos the best out of the ones I've mentioned. Uh, the developers seem to be very responsive if you uh, raise questions with them, and they're keen to get other uh, more more wider use from the community for, the, for their software. OK. Uh, so, I don't think anyone else has asked you any questions. Um, if uh, something occurs to you later, feel free to drop me an email and I will um, reply. Even better, ask the question on um, the GitHub issues so anyone else can find it in future um, if they're so inclined. Um, but thank you very much for your attention. Uh, enjoy the sunshine while it lasts.